Iterators are everywhere in Python. They are elegantly implemented within for loops, list and dictionary comprehensions, but they are hidden in plain sight. In this video, we will learn about iterables and iterators in Python with the help of examples. We will also create our own custom iterator and see how the for loop actually works. We got a lot to cover, so let's get started. Before we learn about iterators, let's first understand what an iterable is. Basically, anything that you can loop over in Python is called an iterable. For example, a list is an iterable. For an object to be considered an iterable, it must have the iter or iter method. Let's check if lists have this special method. To check this, I will use the dir function which returns all the methods of an object. So here on my code editor, I'll say print dir numbers. Now let me run this code. And here among all these methods, you can see the dunder itr method. Let's call this method on this numbers list to see what it does. So here I'll say value equals numbers dot dunder or double underscore itr double underscore and let me print the value. When I press run, then you can see that we got a list iterator object and this is the memory location of that object. Next, we will see what iterator objects are. Iterator in Python is simply an object that can return data one at a time while iterating over it. For an object to be an iterator, it must implement two methods, iter or iter and next. These are collectively called the iterator protocol. Now we'll look into the next method in detail. Suppose we have a list like this. So I'll say numbers equals one comma four comma nine. Now I'll get an iterator from this list using the iter method. So here I'll say value equals numbers dot dunder or double underscore under iter. And next here, this variable value is an iterator and we can get each element of this iterator by using the next method. The next method returns the next value in the iteration. So here I can say item one equals value dot double underscore or dunder next. And then I can print item one. When I run this code, then one, which is the first element of this list is printed. Now, if I run the next method again, it should return the next item, which is four. It's because the next method also updates the state of the iterator. And here I'll say, item two equals value dot dunder next print item two and then item three equals value dot dunder next and then I'll say print item three. Now let me run this code. As you can see first one was printed then four then nine. By the way instead of calling these special methods with an underscore Python has an elegant way to call underscore underscore iter simply with the iter function and underscore underscore next underscore underscore with the next function. I'll make these changes to my previous code. So here, instead of calling uh, numbers dot underscore underscore iter, I can say iter numbers and instead of calling value dot uh, underscore underscore next underscore underscore, I can say next value. Here too, I can say next value and here as well, next value. When I run this code, I get the same output as before, but my code looks a lot cleaner than before. By the time I get to the third element, we have already reached the end of our list. Now let's see what happens if we further try to get the next value. So here I'll say item four equals next value. And let me try to print item four. Now when I run the code, then you can see that the stop iteration exception has been raised. Since our list had only three elements, the call to the fourth next method raised the stop iteration exception. Did you know that for loops internally use the while loop to iterate through sequences? To demonstrate this, let me first loop through a list using the while loop. So I'll go to my code editor and create a new list. I'll say num underscore list equals one comma four comma nine and now let me create an iterator object 
So here I will say iter underscore obj or iterator object equals iter num underscore list. Here the iter object is an iterator. We can now use an infinite while loop to get the next element using the next method and in case a stop iteration exception occurs, we will break out of this loop. So here I will say while true and then I can say try try to get the ne next element so next iter underscore obj and then if I get the element print that element. Now if there is an exception then I can say or if there is more specifically I will say if there is an stop iteration exception then break the code. Here is how this code works. First we have created an iterator object from a list using the iter function. Then we have created an infinite while loop. Inside the loop we have used the next method to get the next element in the sequence. In the next line we have printed that element. We have put all this code inside a try block and when all the items of the iterator are iterated the try block raises the stop iteration exception and we break out of the loop. Let me run this code and you can see that 1, 4 and 9 have been printed. In fact this is exactly how for loops work behind the scenes. A for loop internally creates an iterator object and iterates over it calling the next method until a stop iteration exception is encountered. By the way, if you are finding this video useful, a sub to the channel would be much appreciated. Before moving to the next section of the video, the programmist yeah. team has created an app that allows you to learn Python from your phone. The app contains bit size lessons that are easier to understand, a built in interpreter so that you can run Python on your phone, quizzes and many more. The app is available on both iOS and Android, the links are in the video description. As we have already seen, iterators are simply objects that implement the iter method and the next method. Let's try to make our own iterator object. Here we'll create a program that will generate a sequence of even numbers such as 2, 4, 6, 8 and so on. For this I'll create a class with the init method. So let me remove this old code and here I'll say class even and inside this let me start by creating the init method. So I'll say def underscore underscore init underscore underscore self and max and then let me initialize self dot n equals 2 so that's the first value which is always 2 and self dot max is the value that we provide. By now we already know that iterators must implement an item method which returns an iterator so I'll simply create an item method that returns the object itself. So here I'll say def underscore underscore iter underscore underscore self and here I'll say return self. Now let's implement the next method. This method should give the next element in the stream if it exists. If the next element is not available, it should raise the stop iteration exception. So here I'll say def underscore underscore next underscore underscore. Oops, I forgot a bracket here. Uh, self and here inside this method, we want to generate a sequence up to the max number. And if the next element exceeds max, we will raise an exception. So let me first start with the framework of the code. Here if self.n as long as it is less than self.max, then we need to do one thing and else we need to raise the stop iteration exception. Now inside this if, I need to generate the next number in the sequence. So here I'll say result equals self dot n. I'm temporarily saving the current value of n in the result variable. Now I want to increase the value of n by 2. So here I'll say self dot n plus equals 2 and then return result because I want to return the old value of n not the new one. Now our class is finally complete. Let's create an object from this class which is an iterator because it implements both the iter and the next methods. So here outside the class I'll say numbers equals even 10. Now when I call the next method I should get even numbers one after another. Let me print three even numbers I'll say print next numbers print 
next numbers and print next numbers again now when i press run then you can see that 2 4 and 6 are printed if we use the next method three more times the stop iteration exception is raised as our sequence can only have numbers up to 10 because of this limit here at this point we have covered all the basics of iterators in python but you might be wondering why it is used Iterators are powerful tools when dealing with a large stream of data. If you use regular lists to store these values, our computer would run out of memory quickly. With iterators, however, we can save resources as they return only one element at a time. So in theory, we can deal with infinite data in finite memory. Generally, iterators are implemented in Python using something called generators that make it much easier to use them. We will cover Python generators in detail in our next video. That's it for this video. If you want to revise these concepts, you can find all these programs in our GitHub repository. I'll also put this link in the video description. And if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Happy programming. Mm -hmm.